I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another episode of Dungan Rumpa Trigger Happy Havoc. Now, I know I just released the last episode yesterday. We probably didn't even hit 50,000 likes yet, but I can't wait. I want to get into this class trial right now. But after this episode, I want to see this video hit 50,000 likes, and I will release the next video ASAP. But no more talking. We're just going to jump right into it. If you guys cool with that, you down with that? Everybody get ready and buckle up, because here we go. Am I blind, or are we missing someone? Yo. Yeah, Toko's not here. Huh? And Toko is... You really don't remember? Come kidding, on. I'm just kidding. How could I forget that little nut job? She's a crucial part of the class trial this time. What are you Okie dokie, do? I'll go ahead and drag her out here kicking and screaming. Just one moment, please. And just like he said a few minutes later, he reappeared dragging Toko behind him. <laughs> I t told him I didn't want to, but he forced me. I can't believe you would drag a girl around. Terrible! You're terrible! Whew! So now everyone's here, right? Okay then, hustle on to the elevator and let's get this show on the road! I'll see you guys down there! Let's go. So, shall we get going? It's time to find out who killed Chihiro. Chihiro. Chihiro Fujisaki. She was so gentle, so calm and meek. Nobody had any problems with her. Apparently somebody did. Someone made the choice to kill. A girl like that. And that murderer is one of us. Someone standing right here. Um, am I supposed to talk to people or can we just get this show on the road? The steel box sank with heavy clunking sounds deeper and deeper into the ground. And as we went deeper, the uneasiness in my heart grew bigger and bigger. The elevator was unaffected, however, and continued to descend without hesitation. I mean, that's what elevators do. Until finally, it came to a sudden stop. What do you think? I redecorated. Isn't it so fresh? Isn't it so exciting? Hm, don't waste our time with stupid questions. Let's get this over with. Good, good. You're rip raring to go. Gotta say, I don't hate it. Not at all. Okay, then let's get this show on the road. Everyone, please find your assigned seats. And so, the current opened once again. A deadly judgment. A deadly deception. A deadly betrayal. A deadly riddle, a deadly defense, a deadly SHUT UP! Alright guys, time for the class trial. We all ready for this, Let's boys and begin girls, with a gentlemen? basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the this. results. So I can get ready to talk? If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But, if you pick the wrong one... We all die. Then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Sweet. Okay then. So, first off... But what happens when there's only two people left and then that person kills the other person? Is there a trial? Let's talk about the murder weapon! Let's do it! First, we have to make clear what was used to deliver the fatal blow. Okay, let's see if I got the skills to pay the bills, everybody. Pretty sure I do. Locker room dumbbell. Okay. So I just gotta aim at the yellow text that I don't agree with. Chihiro's fatal injury. Uh-huh. It appears it was a head wound. Yes. According to the Monokuma file, the killer used a blunt instrument. But Come on, tell me Taka, tell me Taka. Right here. Ba bam Give me some! You think you have some proof that contradicts what I said? <laughs> I need to think about it one more time. There must be a contradiction in their statement somewhere. Uh oh. Man, I bet it was an iron pipe. No, 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 no. Get your ass back here. Damn it. Okay, it went a little too fast for me. So let's go back and let's tell that crazy haired dude that it wasn't an iron pipe. It was, in fact, a locker room dumbbell, baby. Bam! Did I say dumbbell? I said dumbbell. I'm a dumbbell. Can we agree that the object that dealt the fatal blow was the dumbbell found at the scene of the crime? C, baby, C. It was covered in blood, and there was nothing else at the scene that could have caused that kind of injury. Let me put my hand on my chin like Makoto. And the wound on the victim's head is consistent with the shape of the dumbbell. And Kyoko. As far as I'm concerned, there's no mistake and no room for doubt on this one. Yes, you... I agree. Looked at her head wound? Of course. I mean, we're supposed to examine the area, right? If you don't mind, I will proceed from here. 
Let's move on to discussion of the culprit. I feel like Biakuya, Kyoko, and Makoto are like the only ones taking this seriously. Although, I believe the criminal behind this heinous act is already quite clear. Yeah, I feel like it's too clear. I feel like there's a twist. It's gonna make me say, what a twist! What? For real? Chihiro's killer is the fiendish serial killer, Genocide Jack. Yeah, but I mean, who's Genocide Jack's real name? Or what's Genocide Jack's real name? Genocide Jack, the fiendish serial killer. Did he really kill Chihiro? A new element has been added to non-stop debates. Would you like to hear more? Sure. Genocide Jack case file is my next bullet. Okay. Well, let's rub our chin pubes, everybody. And let's do this. The culprit is Genocide Jack. I'm sure. Okay. Case closed, as far as I'm concerned. But that's impossible. Wait, what's up with the purple what text? What impossible? Well, I mean, come on. What? There's just no proof for it. Got me. it. BAM! No, what was the point of that purple text? I am confused. Okay, you know what? We're gonna get on the ball. Might know one reason he could. We're gonna be make involved. sure we get right on track. What? I found this file while I was looking around the archive in the library. Makoto taking credit of Biakuya's work. I guess it's some kind of I found this in the archive in the library. I like this guy. The genocide Jack case. Okay, let me shut up. Let me shut up. I know people are mad in the comments. What? That's kind of weird as shit, isn't it? What was something like that doing in the library? The why of it is probably more trouble than it's worth. So let's forget about that for now. Okay. More importantly, it outlines all the specifics of every Genocide Jack case in exceeding detail. According to the file, there appear to be two defining characteristics in every Genocide Jack case. Yep, and I know exactly what they are the because I prepared. The first is that a bloody message is found written at the scene of every murder. Oh, that's right. Boob lust. What? Uh, Shut up. It's actually blood lust. But more important is the other characteristic. And it's something that has never been made public. Never made public? What the hell is it? Why don't you tell them, Makoto? Sure. The other characteristic of every Genocide Jack case, which the world at large doesn't know. If I'm not mistaken, it has to do with the positioning of the body. How the victim was positioned. I yeah! See, I told you I came prepared today, everybody. I came with the receipts. The killer suspends the body in a certain way. We're solving this case. We're smacking this up and down. The only people who know about this are the higher ups in the police department. Mm -hmm. However, Chihiro was most definitely suspended in the same way. You know what? Biakuya knows about the way the killer's methods are. So it kind of makes me believe that he's the killer. But Toko is obviously the killer, I guess. But it seems too obvious that she's the killer. So I don't know what to think. So maybe I'm just like talking myself out of it. When only high-level police officials were aware of it. Sometimes the solution is like easy, but then you try to talk your way out of it and make it harder than it is. There's only I think that's what I'm doing right now. Answer I can think of. It's because the culprit in this case is the real genocide Jack. Okay, calm down, Biakuya. Calm down. No fucking way. You're saying genocide Jack is one of us? Yes. Yes. In fact, it's Toko. What? Genocide Jack's true identity is Toko Fukawa. I mean, we're just jumping right into it. All right, then. Okay, all right. Well, I mean, I told you guys to buckle up because here we go. They're already outing her. Hey. Okay, wait, oh, hold on a sec. Toko has, like, bloodophobia or whatever, remember? What kind of serial killer is afraid of blood? One that has an alter is ego. Is Toko Genocide Jack? The answer is yes. And no. Another riddle. And why is this gotta be so complicated? Yeah, why can't we just solve the case and then just go do what we gotta do? Like, go to the gym, maybe take a couple laps in the pool, make ourselves a sandwich. Why do we have to speak in riddles and questions? It's a riddle for sure, but I feel like I understand it. What it means for Genocide Jack to be Toko, but also not be Toko, the answer is that she's just not one person, but multiple people, right? Yeah, because she has disassociative personality disorder. Hangman's Gambit. I forgot what the hell this is. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, A. Wait, no. S. What is happening? Oh, Schizo! She is a Schizo, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the jury. Can I have your attention, please? Is it because Genocide Jack has a split personality? Yes, it is, Makoto. Huh? I think I read that somewhere in the file, too. 
They thought that the suspect might have... What did they call it? Dissociative oh, identity not personality disorder. disorder. Identity disorder. Oh, okay. How was I, how was I trying still, to sound all smart? Go and say that about Miss Fukawa is... Perfectly acceptable. Toko's strange behavior after seeing the body is proof enough that she has a split personality. The one thing that shows Toko could have a split personality, it has to do with her behavior. Her behavior changed, she arrived late, she fainted. Her behavior changed, duh! The other two don't You're have anything to do with anything. She started acting totally different than usual, right? Right. That's right. Think back. She fainted when she saw Chihiro's corpse, and then, when she woke up... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Whoa, was that a dead body? Hey, are you dead? Yeah! <laughs> she must have hit her head real hard when she fainted. The world has a front and back, a top inning and a bottom. A three and two and a low This is quite concerning. I mean, she sounds completely different. I mean, with that long ass tongue hanging out, funny, I mean, I sure. would be too. That melancholy tone of hers completely disappeared. Let me go assigning adjectives to my tongue without permission. Not to mention, once she regained consciousness and saw Chihiro's body again, she was utterly calm. In other words, within her is one personality that can handle blood, and one that obviously can. <laughs> I kind of feel bad for Toko. So kind of though. Trapped herself I want to her see room, how she gets executed because, because I'm going to be like. scared of genocide Jack? <laughs> My tongue's going to be hanging out too when she gets executed like. <laughs> hey, what's goody? I won't let genocide Jack have control. I'll drive out the killer. Drive out the murderous fiend. The reason she locked herself in her room wasn't to keep other people from getting in. It was to keep her other personality from getting out. Makes sense. What? Toko was afraid. Afraid of the murderous fiend inside of her. Of killing even more people. <gasps> How? Yeah. How can you know all this? I do believe you misunderstood her. What she's trying to say isn't, how can you know all this? No. What she wants to know is, how could you tell them? Huh? Last night, just before Monokuma gave his motive speech, Toko and I had a strange conversation. Hmm. She told me a most interesting story. She said, a murderous fiend lived within her, and she was afraid it could appear and attack at any time. And that trepidation is what's caused her to have such a bleak attitude. Isn't that right, Toko? <laughs> Damn. This is all a lie. Right, Toko? You said you wouldn't tell anyone. Yeah, I remember her saying that when she was hiding behind the door. She said that right to be a Kuya. What? You promised. I can't believe you lied. Hey, are you going to genocide jack us right now? You have huh? only yourself to blame. You came to me with your tragic little story. Are you going to go a little Jenny on us right now? To. This is the real world. Not some romantic fantasy fairy tale. Oh yeah, because she was totally in love with this guy, right? <laughs> Besides, you broke your promise first. You said that as long as you were here, no matter what, you wouldn't let Genocide Jack kill anyone. But in spite of that promise... I mean, we already know what happened. Chihiro's proof, you want me to go get her? I'm sorry, I couldn't keep our promise. But don't worry. Never again. I won't let Genocide Jack have control ever again. Oh, we know. Because your ass about to get executed. You said if I kept my promise, you would go out with me. That's the only reason I promised. How many times do I have to tell you? I never said that, but you weren't able to do it. You just couldn't resist that rush you got from killing, could you? I, I tried. I swear I tried to control it. I feel like two people are in a relationship fighting right now, and I'm just that guy in the room just awkwardly standing here listening to it all. But your efforts were useless. Do you guys feel that way too? I hate you. Well, the opening act is nearly finished. All that's left is to hear from the person in question directly. Is this case going to be solved that quick? The person? What about all that investigating? You don't mean... Oh, she's going to be Genocide Jack? Toko's body suddenly lunged backwards. A huge thud echoed across the courtroom, but in the next second. <gasps> oh, yeah, that's that tongue! That's that tongue! What the heck? God, 
Damn! So it's a butcher out. knife tongue. Well, whatever. What are you gonna do? I'm the ultimate murderous fiend, Genocide Jack! Or better yet, let's go with Genocide Jill! I like Genocide Jack better. What the fuck is this? <laughs> What happened to you? Dude, this is awesome! Not Toko, that's a loser name. And what happened is a textbook split personality. She sounds like Junko. But what if one of them happens to be a serial killer? You should turn a blind eye to one's fault. <laughs> oh, man. So that's how TikTok sucks. girls laugh. Like they say, sound and murder is mine, sound and murder is body. This one is so different from the one we've come to know. Yes, well, the world is composed of a front and a back, you know. Damn, she can lick her own eyeballs with that tongue. Just like how every inning has a top and a bottom, or how in the depths of every truth lives a little lie. Behind every dark and gloomy soul lives another that shines as bright as the sun! Okay, we get it. Do we even need any more proof? We know she's Genocide Jack now. <laughs> this is the murderous fiend Genocide Jack? This is... This is... This is beyond insane! Um, Miss Jack, uh, uh, Jill, can I ask you a question? What's up? Some of us think you might be the mastermind behind our entire situation. What are your thoughts on that? This is so well, cool. I'll tell you, I am the mastermind of all masterminds! <laughs> Just kidding! Then, it's not true? Of course it's not true! How dare you try to link me to that creepazoid! And another thing, the police Government and society in the outside world are totally powerless. But why, though? I mean, they just let this idiotic bloodthirsty maniac go buck wild all over town. Sure, I'm a bloodthirsty maniac, but life is pain, right? To live is to hurt other people. It's a necessary evil if you want to survive. The act of living itself causes pain for everyone. Just kidding again. <laughs> She really is bashy crazy. This should be enough to convince you. This murderous fiend is responsible for Chihiro's death. There's clearly a motive, so there should be no doubt. A motive? Remember what Monokuma told us? If someone didn't murder and graduate within 24 hours, oh. an embarrassing memory or secret would be revealed. But why would Monokuma tell everybody that Toko was Genocide Jill? Well, Did I say Genocide Jill? Come Toko's on, we're gonna go with Genocide Jack. It sounds genocide way cooler. Jack. If a secret like that came to light, Toko's life would have undoubtedly been forever ruined. So she had a very clear motive to never have that side of herself exposed. But what if that wasn't the secret that was going to be exposed of Toko? Well, actually, she did read it, and then she freaked out, I guess. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting. But sorry, as much as I hate to admit it, I'm not the culprit. No way. Huh? But I cannot imagine anyone other than you. Wait, 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 wait. Maybe so, maybe so, but nevertheless, it's no. the truth. No. Hey, Genocide Jill, Do you no. Really expect any of us to believe you. Yeah, Sakura, tell her. Yeah. I could never believe a word you say, you monster. Yeah, 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 tell her. Maybe. Maybe she's totally right about that, but there's something still bothering me. What she said. I need to get some more details about all of this. What do you mean? Makoto, we're a team. Don't leave me in the dark. Make your argument. Status of the dead body. Okay, let's pay attention, guys. Everybody lock in. Sorry, but I didn't kill anyone. Okay. You say that, but do you really expect any Some of us this to purple text, it? though. Throw me Perhaps off. if you had an alibi, that would change things. Oh, an alibi, huh? Now we're talking. When you compare your past murders to this incident, I don't know which one to shoot at. The modus operandi matches completely. What more proof do we need? Oh, um, we're running out of text! Uh-oh, that's not one of them! Give it up. You killed her. Okay, hold on. We gotta get going. We gotta do this. We gotta do this. Hold on. Okay, I have to just focus on remembering Chihiro's body. That must have the answer. That should prove that what he said isn't quite right. Okay. Sorry, but I didn't kill anyone. Alright, let's you fast forward that. that. You know what? Maybe now it's what Biakuya said. When you compare your oh, the modus operandi that matches. BAM! No, it's wrong. Freaking go! I don't get things wrong! Are the methods of murder really exactly the same? I'm not so sure about that. I think there's a slight difference between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. Yeah. Huh? How's it any different? I remember that at the end of the episode. Uh oh you don't know? 
Uh, Makoto found something out. Well then, human garbage! Let me tell you! I murder with passion and conviction. I consider myself a professional, and I have a very particular way of doing things. Yeah, she stabs the people and then uses the weapon she, you know, killed them with to hang them up. Imagine you go to a fancy Italian restaurant. They're very picky about the noodles, the sauce, everything. So Chihiro was killed with a dumbbell, but hung with the desk lamp wiring. So that's why I was kind of thinking that maybe Biakui is the killer. But what happened to Chihiro? I don't know, I don't know. It'd be like if that same Italian restaurant started using Ragu or Chef Boyardee. I think Biakuya read the Genocide Jack file and he was trying to imitate the murder. I don't know. Let's see how this all unfolds, but I'm starting to think it's Biakuya. This is no creation of mine. Let me rephrase that in a way that maybe makes more maybe sense. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is Toko. There are two clear differences between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. There's one clear difference between the murders. In the photos from the other Genocide Jack cases, look at the neck and stomach. Here you'll see a clear difference. The victim's fatal injury, the style of the bloody message. The victim's fatal injury. Come on now. Stop playing with your boy. One, Stop playing with me. The cause of death is different. Playtime is over. In the Genocide Jack murders, all the victims were killed the same way. I'm really about that Phoenix Wright life. According to the case file, they I'm not getting anything wrong. Killed with well, you guys know. A pair of scissors. But Chihiro died from a blow to the head, right? Yeah. Ah, yes. That is remarkably different from the other murders. Wouldn't it be strange for someone who kills the same way without fail to suddenly change their method? And there's more. One more conflicting detail. That's right. In my recipe of murder, if the bloody message is the tortellini, then the arrangement of the body would be the pesto sauce. I'm not picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> Stop comparing killing people to cooking? So, are you saying the other difference has to do with how the body was arranged? That's right, the second difference is related to how she was suspended. In the photos of the other Genocide Jack cases, all the other victims were stabbed through their hands. Here you'll see a clear difference. What was used to suspend her, how the body was posed, what was used to suspend her. Okay, um, I, can I pause this? Okay, just so the time doesn't run out. So I want to explain something real quick, and I feel like I'm blowing my own mind right now, and if I'm right, I'm going to be so freaking hyped. Okay, so Biakuya read the Genocide Jack case files. He saw how Genocide Jack was, you know, killing people and, you know, the methods and the bloodlust message on the wall, and then he found out that Toko was actually Genocide Jack, and that was her alter ego. So he decided to kill people in the Genocide Jack style. And he also wanted to frame Toko for the murder so everybody could get executed and he could graduate and leave and go about his happy life. And I think that's what happened. Hopefully I'm right because I will be so freaking hyped. My heart's beating fast actually. So let's get to it. What was used to the to You know what I mean. Do you remember <laughs> that's what how hyped I am. used to suspend her? They use some kind of rope to I hang her up by her wrists. What is your point? Well, in all the previous Genocide Jack cases, something else was used to suspend them. Yeah, you guys already know what it is. Specifically, pairs of razor-sharp scissors. Mm -hmm, that is correct. And guess what? I use my own specially designed scissors for the murders and the arrangement. Oh, my bad. Okay, big dog. Like I said, I'm a professional. So naturally, I'm very picky about the tools I use. And... Big Mac said there's two differences, Big Mac? Are you referring to me? Oh, that's his nickname now? Big Mac? I'm down with that. Listen up, Big Mac. There's actually one more difference. Huh? My word, you really didn't notice? Take a look at who the victims were in each Genocide Jack case. Men? There's a pattern there. Just waiting to be discovered. A pattern? Figure that out, and it'll be plain as death why I couldn't have possibly killed that little lolly girl. It's because they're all dudes, right? Hmm, let's see. There was a pattern surrounding the Genocide Jack victims, and Chihiro didn't fit in. If you look at the names of every victim, what you'll notice is... I think I figured it out. I know why she couldn't have killed Chihiro. Because Chihiro was a girl! I got it! Come on! Is it because Chihiro was a girl? Is this game girl? serious right now? Bingo, like, stop playing with me, game! In all the Genocide Jack cases, 
all the victims had something in common. God, man, I'm gonna pat myself on my own freaking back. Ken Harada, 32. You guys already know. They're all dudes, basically. They were all guys? Yes, Yashuhiro. That's right! The people I kill with such passion and conviction are all adorable little men. <laughs> I can't believe I said it! I'm so embarrassed! <laughs> I'm so embarrassed! <laughs> I love Genocide Jill. What the hell is wrong with you? I can't help it! I'm just a full throttle boy on boy fangirl! And the mopey side of me just hates it! I'm a Genocide Jill stan, I think. But now I'm on the fast track to becoming a full fledged man man! Yeah, me too. So since Chihiro was a girl and not an adorable little man, you wouldn't kill her? Would an Italian chef suddenly start making ramen just because they're both noodles? Don't be stupid. I have too much passion and conviction to cross that line. That's the absolute reality of the one and only. We get it. You've clearly explained your hobby yeah, and your philosophy. Yeah, I think Biakui is the killer. But that's not all there is to it. That's probably why he was so quick to have Makoto help him investigate. So Makoto could be the one who really believes that Toko was the killer. And my camera just died. It's a different matter entirely. When you're forced to kill in order to survive. Quiet, lowly cur! Lowly cur? I would never kill for a reason as petty as mere survival. And if by some fluke I did kill to survive, why would I bother with the message and arrangement? It'd make me the obvious suspect! That's facts. That does make some amount of sense. That actually makes a lot of sense. Plus, whatever reason I have for killing, I would never move out my prized scissors. Who would go out of their way to use a big, stupid, heavy dumbbell? Maybe you used the dumbbell because you couldn't find any scissors in the school. Any scissors? I don't just use any scissors. I only use my own set of high class envy of the entire world scissors. Okay, whatever. There still aren't any in the school. Are you sure about that? I'm really starting to think it's Biakuya because remember where the crime scene was? I think the crime actually took place in the boys' locker room, somewhere where only Biakuya could enter because obviously he can't go in the girls' bathroom or restroom or locker room or whatever room. Looking like Raphael with that. She's fully equipped. That's right. So I can kill anywhere, anytime. Why would I resort to dumbbells or rope when I have my truck? Whoops, Stay sorry guys. You can't, can you? Got her dogs, all of you. That was actually Not cool. Mention, I, have no clue how I like the way she was holding that. <laughs> the rope's totally out of the question anyway. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on anymore. Could such a heinous villain really be innocent? But the body really was suspended, right? And nobody but the police knew about that. Yeah. That's why we figured it had to be the real deal and not some copycat killer or whatever. Actually, hold on. There is one person. One person who could have copied the Genocide Jack cases. Yeah, Piyakuya. Uh, come on now. I told you to stop playing with me. So you better stop freaking playing with me! Here's my answer. Man, I'm Yakuya. getting hyped. It's possible you could have found out, isn't it? Oh yeah! You'd have no problem gaining access to classified government documents or internal police records. When Biakuya said that nobody in the world knew of Genocide Jack's method of killing because it was never released to the media or to anybody, only the government knew, I was like, wait, Biakuya could have known too because he said he's been reading case files since he was a little boy. Plus, you would already looked through the Genocide Jack file before this all happened, hadn't you? Yeah! Are you saying Mr. Togami did it? I mean, I'm not saying it, but I'm implying it. Then, the reason he pushed the theory of Genocide Jack being the killer so hard was because he wanted to pin the crime on her. Back. So, he rearranged the scene to disguise it and make it look like I put my stamp on it! The adorable glasses man was behind it all! Oh, I'm on fire! <laughs> well, Biakia, what's your response? I see. So now the suspicion falls on me. Yes, it does. Then I must ask. When would you say I began acting suspicious? Surely you must have an answer. Hmm. Looking back and thinking about it now, the way you were acting right before we discovered the body was a little strange. I can't remember. I need my memory jog. And the locker rooms. They're suspicious. Very suspicious indeed. Wouldn't you agree? Huh? Suspicious? It seems nobody searched the locker rooms. Let's start with the girls' locker room. 
You wanted to go to the girls' locker room right away, right? But since you're a guy... I should have naturally thought of the boys' locker room first. Is that what you want to say? The victim was Chihiro, a girl. Hence why I said we should check the girls' locker room. Hmm. Nothing strange about that, I'd say. On the contrary, there's something very strange. Okay, then. What's so strange about it? Go ahead. Share with the rest of the class. There was a clear contradiction in what Biakuya just said. I need to make it clear to everyone. A new element has been added to non-stop debates. Would you like to hear more? No, I'm good. We got this. We're poochie. Watch me know this. Make your argument. What's my bullet? Monokuma file number two. Okay, so for this one, I basically can use one of the statements as a potential flashback for any future contradictions. So I just have to see how I can do this, okay? So you said Byakuya was acting kind of weird. Let me see how I do this. Like that? But he was acting weird. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I can load another bullet inside of the truth bullet. That actually makes sense. That's pretty cool. Absolutely take it. That's a natural reaction for any guy. <laughs> okay. The victim was Chihiro, who was a girl. There, bam. So ah! Just we check the girl. That was it. There was no time. That was it. What's so so I got my flashback bullet, and then now I use it on Biakuya's statement. That's easy. Okay, let's do this. So, so let's hone in on that. Ba bam. Got that? Okay. Fast forward to Biakuya's statement, which should be coming up soon. Right here. Ba bam. Give me some! Woo! Damn, I'm too good! I'll tell you what's so strange about that. Because up until we actually discovered the body, we couldn't have known who the victim was. Facts, 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 facts. So your claim that you went to the girls' locker room first because Chihiro was the victim doesn't hold up. Doesn't hold up. I see. Like that dumbbell That's you used answer. to smash your head in. I must interesting. Very interesting indeed. But your reasoning is still too weak. Is it my guy? What's wrong? Is that it? Surely you've got more than that. Go ahead. Show us. I will. Stop talking. What's with Biakuya's attitude? It's like he doesn't even care. I've got him cornered, but he's acting like it has nothing to do with him. What's the matter? You're not finished already, are you? There must be It's just be a scare tactic, it. Makoto. Don't fall for it. There is. I think there is more to it. Think about it. We just talked about the differences between this case and past Genocide Jack incidents. The proof you're looking for is hidden in there. Oh? Proof that I'm the culprit, you mean? Yeah. The differences between this case and the other Genocide Jack murders. The evidence that proves Biakuya is responsible hidden in there. What could it be? Um, the fact that he used the desk lamp wiring? Well, let's see what the bullet is. Library desk lamp. Yup, I'm right. Okay, let's get to it. Toko space, man. What? The difference between the cases? You want me to explain it again? Sure, come on. When I want to kill, I use my very own special scissors. Yeah. I can use those same scissors to arrange the body. But Chihiro was suspended with... It was some kind of rope. Was it not? That's right! It absolutely was! Then there must be something very okay, fishy I think it's coming about up. that rope. Hey, Byakuya, where'd you get it from, huh? I'd never seen that rope Yeah, before here we go. Life. ba bam What? Well, come on, bro. Obviously, somebody else oh! Now I gotta rewind time again. Okay, I know what to do. Let's rewind it, guys. I keep forgetting that I can slow down time, too. I always speed it up. I never slow it down. So here we go. Hey, Byakuya. Right here. Slow it down and give me some. No, it's wrong. There we go, guys. Have some patience with me. I'm gonna be a pro at this soon. Actually, I'm pretty sure you have seen it before. Because, you see, that rope, or should I say... That yeah, test lamp? That extension cord? Oh, okay. We can go with that. An extension cord? Yakuya, you've used the extension cord in the library more than once, haven't you? Yeah, you use it to light your way so you can read the freaking book, huh, nerd? And the same extension cord that was in the library all this time went missing after the murder. Yep. And there's no way someone who uses that extension cord as much as you do wouldn't discover that fact. And Byakuya must be the one who took the extension cord. I can't imagine any other possibility. 
that's really what you think, then your conclusion is something like this. I hope it's him, because I can't wait to see him get executed. I killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, then hung her up and wrote that bloody message. I intentionally made it look like Genocide Jack was behind it. Exactly. Is that about right? He's doing it again. He's totally calm, totally unconcerned. As if he's not even involved. Wait, not even involved? What's wrong? I asked you if you think that's what happened. Hell yes, that's what happened. So that's it, right? Biaki is the killer. I don't disagree with not disagreeing. He kept calling us a game, right? So he'd be totally willing to do something like this What's to What's Makoto win? thinking right now, guys? Um, sorry, but could we hold on just a second? I... I think we need to talk about this a little more. Sure. Do we really need to? We've already decided who did it. I know, but still, there's something that's still bothering me. Is that right? And what, pray tell, is still bothering you? I killed her in the girls' locker room, then disguised my crime. Specifically, I dressed it up to make it look like it was the work of a homicidal psychopath. What about all that bothers you? Wait, what was that just now? Something's not right. Chihiro's body was definitely found in the girls' locker room, but does that mean... Can I really just accept what Biakuya said as the truth? No, I don't think so. There's definitely something off about what he said. The extension cord, the scene of the crime. I got it! You say you killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, right? But are you sure about that? Isn't it possible that the murder took place somewhere else? Yeah, like the boys' locker room? How disappointing. What kind of question is that? Even in the world of disappointments, this is a true letdown. She was found dead in the girls' locker room. There is absolutely no question about that. How could the scene of the crime have been anywhere else? Well, I think it's entirely possible that she was killed somewhere else, then carried there later, I agree. along with the rest of the murder scene. The uh, rest of the yeah, murder so scene? Yeah, so it was one big switcheroo. That was awfully specific. Please tell me you have a reason for saying all of that. I believe I do. Hey, Biakuya, did you just... Did I just take you off guard? When the story suddenly moved to the crime scene, Biakuya, who'd been so confident up till now, maybe Biakuya never even realized that the actual scene of the crime could have been somewhere else. Hey, don't just move on without permission. What do you mean she was killed somewhere else? Come on, Makoto. If there's any chance the murder took place somewhere else, let's see the proof. Evidence that shows the murder took place somewhere else. There was something that was switched between the boys and the girls' locker room. It was the posters. Give me some! Come on, present. I yes! I'm still getting the used to it! that she was killed somewhere else is... <laughs> the poster that's hanging in each locker room. I'm loving this game so far. I'm having a lot of fun. Proof is some posters? You all always suggest me, like, the greatest games. The poster in the girls' locker room was... A picture of a big boob supermodel. Big boobs. But don't you think that's kind of strange? Big, big boobs. Why would the girls' locker room have a poster like that? I bet those massive jugs of hers were totally <laughs> <laughs> Toko, calm down. Meanwhile, the boys' locker room had a poster of the super popular boy band Tornado. Again, that doesn't really seem to belong in a boys' locker room. Yes, Makoto. So you're saying that maybe the posters were switched? And there's one other thing I noticed about the locker rooms. The stain. You know what I'm talking about, right, Sakura? The big shit stain. You're referring to my protein coffee, aren't you? I mean, if that's what the kids are calling it nowadays, then sure. Protein coffee? While I was in the girls' locker room earlier, I spilled some protein coffee on the carpet. Protein coffee, guys. But I noticed that after the murder, the stain had been totally She was probably lifting weights away. and couldn't make it to the bathroom. I'm just saying. No, it's not that the stain was scrubbed away. It was moved. Yeah. It was moved to the other locker room. Give me that. I got it! The stain on the girls' locker room carpet wasn't scrubbed away. In fact... I found it on the boys' locker room carpet. That's definitely the stain from my protein coffee. <laughs> She's gonna go over there and drink the rest of it. Then, does that mean that the carpet was switched to? But why would anyone do that? To move the murder scene from one locker room to the other. It's certainly plausible, don't you think? Yeah, I dig it. In other words, 
In order to completely swap the scene of the crime, the bloodstained poster and carpet were moved along with the dead body. By doing this, the killer was able to change the entire room where the murder took place. I can certainly follow your reasoning, but why would the culprit bother doing that? Maybe to pin it on a specific gender? Huh? Why would they go through all that trouble of switching the scene of the crime? So it can make it seem like the killer had to have been a girl, I guess? Actually, an even bigger question. If the murder did take place in the boy's locker room, then how did Chihiro get in the boy's locker room in the first place? That's a good question. To get into the locker rooms, you have to swipe your <gasps> handbook. Leon! Leon's the handbook! But Chihiro's handbook should have only allowed her access to the girl's locker room. I'm too good. Room. I'm too... She had no way I amazed myself. Like, wow. No, she did have a way, and I can tell you what it was. I highly doubt that. Shut up! I'm telling you, I know how she could have done it. Is he right? Could Chihiro really have gotten into the boys' locker room somehow? Yes, with Leon's e-handbook. Come on, let me make my argument. I got it. Broken e-handbook. Yes, sir! That's what I'm talking about. I am on one today. Is it really possible? Yes, Celeste. Could Chihiro really have gotten into the boy's locker room somehow? Ah, I got it! Okay, tell me. She must have packed her e-handbook! No, that's not it. She was the ultimate programmer, after all. Maybe that was the one I had to shoot sure, my bullet at, though. No problem for her. No, I don't I'm just gonna go through it. all the options and let's see. She used the thing that was in the main hall. Huh? What thing? Oh, here we go. I'm talking about Leon's yep. handbook. Give me that. Mm. No, that's wrong. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. No, I don't think Chihiro used Leon's handbook. Wait, what? It wasn't Leon's handbook? Why not? Because Leon's handbook was broken. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, then, yeah, I guess that'd be pretty impossible, huh? I am struck silent by how quickly you gave up. Last. Isn't there a regulation against using someone else's handbook? No. Actually, the rule states that loaning your handbook is prohibited. It says nothing about borrowing one. In other words, you could borrow a dead person's handbook all you want, and you'd be safe. Yup, yup, yup! Hit the nail square on the noggin! Of course, if it were broken, that wouldn't make any sense anyway. So then, she must have hacked hers, like I said. She used her ultimate programmer skills and... You can't fix an e-handbook. The instant you open one up, a security buzzer starts blaring. So if she didn't use Leon's handbook, and she didn't modify her own handbook... Maybe Mr. Nayagi's initial assumption is just... wrong? It seems like there's no way she could have got into the boys' locker room. So I guess so. Okay then, I vote for Byakuya. Is that it then? Chihiro was killed in the girls' locker room, and Biaku is the only one who did it? Really? But still, I don't know what else I can do. Hold on a second. I agree with you, though. I think you're on the right track. What the... You finally decide to open your mouth, and that's what you've got to say? There's no way she could get in the boys' locker room, right? So... Why are you so sure she couldn't get in? There's still one other way she could have gained access. There is? What? What are you talking about? What other way is there? Well, to explain that, why don't we take a little break from the trial? I'd like you all to come see something. Wait, 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 wait! Just what do you think you're doing? Don't worry. This'll make the whole trial more exciting. I'm sure that thought must please you. Huh? It'll make things more exciting? <laughs> well, all right then. I declare an official class trial recess. There's actually a class trial recess. Wow. For real? Now then, what is it you want to show us? It better not be boring or I'll be very unhappy. Oh, I have no doubt it'll meet your lofty expectations. So, shall we go? Let's do it. All right, I guess we're finally going to have our first recess. So before I even knew what was happening, the class trial had been put on hold. We headed off with Kyoko in the lead. And where she took us was... Wait, could they have gotten in from the pool area? The girls' locker room? We've already searched this place top to bottom! What are you trying to pull, Missy? I'd like you to examine the victim's body one more time. You want to check it again? 
Be sure to examine the entire body very carefully. Take your time. Examine her carefully. Yo, hopefully you like make me sick, dog. Using our hands? No way, no way, no way, no way, no way! Bro, she's it's dead. Probably best if I don't run my hands all over a girl's dead body. It's not that I'm creeped out or anything, it's just based on religious grounds, you know? Very well. I'll do it. But, but you're a girl. You shouldn't have to touch a dead body. Just let one of the boys do it. No, it's okay. I think Chihiro would rather have a girl examine her. So just leave this to me. S Sakura? What is this? Some kind of secret girl on girl action? Is that what you two are about? That's not it at all. Stop screwing around. Okay. Here I go. I'm sorry, Chihiro. Please excuse the intrusion. She's dead. She don't care. Putting her hands together in a brief prayer, Sakura then began to quietly examine her body. Be sure to check her entire body, and I believe we will solve this particular mystery. Her entire body? I know you say that, but... What? This is... What is this... <laughs> What is it? Not possible. It's not possible. What? Sakura's eyes were staring wildly at Chihiro's lifeless form. Her massive frame trembled. This... this girl is... Is what? Is a boy! What?! Uh, Wait! Sakura just spelled so Chihiro's she jump? Like, she just grabbed uh, balls and wiener? What?! You're joking, right? I wouldn't joke about this. And it's really true? Chihiro was... a guy? Hmm? Oh, what? You guys didn't know? Heck, I knew that right off the bat! What? Chihiro Fujisaki was totally a guy! So what does this mean? <laughs> he was a cross-dresser? Oh, I was really on fire! I wish I had killed him! So that's what Kyoko wanted to show everyone, huh? Okay, so Chihiro was a guy all along, but just cross-dressed. So everybody mistook Chihiro for a girl. Is that what it was? <laughs> yes, that certainly does make things much more exciting. Now let's ride this wave of excitement back to the courtroom and get back to the trial. Wow. Okay, so Chihiro was <coughs> able to get inside the boys' locker room. But how did Chihiro get inside of the girls' wait, wait, wait? wait. Then. Let's resume the class trial. That's why Chihiro didn't want to work out in front of anybody. Because she didn't want anybody to find out. Okay, that totally makes sense. We've all just learned of the shocking revelation that Chihiro was actually a boy. Let's pick up from there. Yes, well, I don't know his reason for hiding it. But the fact is, Chihiro was not a girl, but a boy. Yeah. To think that Chihiro was actually a guy. The thought had never even crossed my mind. Yeah, me neither. And because the I thought that was going to be like a new type of injury, no like a fatal injury. Access to the boys locker room. Assuming his handbook did, in fact, list his gender as male, then yes, that would be true. Of course his handbook said he was a boy. He dressed like a girl, but he was a boy through and through. So then... There should be no issue with Makoto's initial assertion. Okay. The victim was killed in the boy's locker room, and was then later moved to the girl's locker room. And the killer could have easily used Sayaka or Junko's handbook to get into the girl's locker room. Makes sense. So Chihiro really was killed in the boy's locker room? So what was the point of getting the broken handbook uh, evidence? I still Just don't to throw understand me off? the motive for moving the body, but... Yes, that does seem plausible. That's a pretty crazy twist, though. Well... I must admit, I did find it rather odd. I knew he felt a little... off. There was a certain incongruity to his female body. This is the most titillating situation! So now everything has been connected. All the mysteries have finally become clear. Okay, well, connected or clear or whatever. We still think you're the killer, remember? <laughs> Very interesting. This has become very interesting indeed. It has. Ah, he's off his own this has actually become world. very, very interesting. What about you, Makoto? 
After everything we've learned, do you still think Byakuya is the killer? Well, without a doubt, Byakuya is the one that made Chihiro's death look like Genocide Jack did it. But... But I... I think he might not actually be the killer after all. Okay, how many twists are we gonna have in this freaking episode? What? Huh? What? What? How many? The one who Tell me how many more. Place? He just seems to be too... easy going about all this. Like he's enjoying us solving the mystery. The way he's acting... It makes it seem like it doesn't have anything to do with him. Maybe it's all just an act. And you think that might be because it doesn't have anything to do with him? Plus, the evidence he left behind was a little too... How can I put it? Overt. He consciously chose to use the extension cord, knowing it could connect him to the murder. At least, that's how I see it. And Byakuya, when you found out the murder took place in the boys' locker room, it seemed to rattle you. And then again, when you found out Chihiro was actually a guy. If you really were the killer, that stuff wouldn't have had any effect on you. Okay, so who is the killer then? So that's your thinking, huh? Well, it bothers me that you don't have more concrete reasons, but... It's fine. I guess I'll mark it as correct, for the time being. Mark it as... correct? He's right. I am not the culprit. Wow. I just happened to come across the corpse in the girl's locker room uh, and decided to enter. boy. Are you fucking with us right now? No, I am not effing with you right now. I'm telling what you the truth. What is happening? Well, I find it very hard to believe. Whoa, what is happening? Go ahead. Find it very hard to believe. You're free to be executed along with the rest of us. If you're really telling the truth, then why? Why do you do that to his body? My reasons hardly matter right now. Uncovering the culprit is much more important. I say? mean, his reason would be stupid if he was trying to make it look like a genocide jack killing, because if we pinned it on Toko and Toko wasn't actually the killer, then Biakuya along with everybody would die and the real killer would be loose. So that doesn't make any sense to me. Now then, if it wasn't me, who was it? Well... I don't think I can say for sure without talking about it a little more. We're seriously gonna keep going? We're all good, aren't we? I thought it was clear Byakuya did it. No, I'm with Makoto. If there's any doubt whatsoever, we need to explore every possibility. Because if we're wrong, we all die here. That's true. Very well then. I'm with you too. Damn straight. Count me in. Do you not have a mind of your own? Of course I do. What am I, an ant or something? Anyway, let's discuss this all as a group one more time. We still have time to make our decision. We do. That's very true. Our lives are all on the line. Excellent. Then shall we resume our game of hide and seek? Yes, we will. But we are going to do that in the next episode. 50,000 likes and we are going to finish the second class trial. I thought it was Toko. Then while we were going through the case, I was like, it was definitely Biakuya. Now I'm not so sure. I have no idea what happened. But we are going to figure that out in the next episode. So if you guys want to see that, make sure you give this video one big fat like. And tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is that dude!